Hi everyone, my name is Joseph Todd, and today I'll be talking to you about the triboelectric effect. The triboelectric effect is a type of contact electrification in which certain materials become electrically charged after coming into contact with another different material and are then separated. As you can see in a classic example on the right, where rubber and fur are rubbed together, after they're removed, the rubber will be left with a net negative charge and the fur will be left with a net positive charge. Now rubbing isn't necessary for triboelectrification, but it helps facilitate the transfer charge. What is necessary is direct contact, as when two opposing objects are brought closer and closer together, their atomic orbitals will overlap, and the material possessing greater electron affinity will rob the electrons from the opposing material and be left with a net negative charge. This is different from static electricity because it is the process of charge separation and one of the mechanisms that produce static electricity. Uh, static electricity can be defined as a material possessing a net charge and the interactions that result due to that net charge. So here I have an example that you've all seen of rubbing a balloon through your hair and here I rub the balloon through my hair and the negative electrons from my hair are transferred to the balloon, leaving the balloon with a net negative charge. And as the balloon is brought in proximity to the wall, uh, the wall will become polarized and the surface of the wall will be coated with a positive charge and that will create an attraction between the wall and the balloon and hold the balloon in place. Here I have another example with a homemade electroscope. And here I demonstrate that tribal electrification is in fact occurring through rubbing a balloon through my hair and that will leave the balloon with a net negative charge and that charge can be seen as I brought bring, bring the balloon close to the electroscope the charge will transfer via induction and those electrons will coat the aluminum plates or the aluminum foil at the bottom which will then have the same charge and repel each other. Something interesting and important to note about triboelectrification is that the total charge of any process must remain constant. So in the example of rubbing amber against cloth, after you separate them, um, having rubbed them together, they'll be left with net charges. However, those net charges must add up to zero. And this is known as the law of conservation of charge. We've had a growing understanding of tribal electrification that all began in 624 BC in ancient Greece with a, with a guy named Thales of Miletus. He took a piece of amber and rubbed it against fur, and afterward he found that amber could pick up pieces of straw. He called amber electron. About 2,000 years later in England, William Gilbert discovered that a lot of materials were capable of being rubbed together to create charge. He called this capacity electrics. A few years later, Sir Thomas Brown declared that when a crystal and cloth are rubbed together, the crystal became an electric object, which possesses the property of electricity. Thus, the triboelectric effect ultimately led to the foundation of our modern-day understanding of electricity. And later, uh, John Wilka came, Johann, sorry, Wilka came along, and he is credited with putting together the first triboelectric series. And Wilka determined that positively charged objects and negatively charged objects could be placed on a spectrum. What this series helps us do, for example, is predict the charges of objects that have an unknown charge. Materials on the positive side tend to have a greater tendency to donate electrons than those on the negative side, which tend to accept electrons, thus becoming more negatively charged. Therefore, we can predict that the materials on the negative side will strip electrons from the materials on the positive side, so the materials are either ranked from top to bottom or from left to right, and the farther apart that these two materials are on the series, the greater the charge will be on the material after it is rubbed against an another material that is spaced far apart from it. An example of this can be seen uh, with rubber from my balloon and pieces of paper. 
since they are spaced farly apart on the triboelectric series. This effect is pretty significant, as you can see, the pieces of paper are attracted to the net negative charge in the balloon, and this attractive force will cause the pieces of paper to jump up onto the balloon. Sorry guys, I was having a bit too much fun at home. Um, uh, another example that you've all seen is with water. As uh, a rubber balloon that if given a net negative charge is placed near the water, the water molecules inside the water will become polarized, meaning the hydrogens in the water molecules will reorient themselves to face the negative charge on the balloon. This attraction and orientation towards the negative charge causes the water to bend. Now I have two sample problems for you to think about. I'm going to give you a second to read the problem and to think about the answer. And then I'll come back with you in just a second and discuss um, the reasoning behind that answer. Okay, so I hope you've paused the video and had a moment to look at this. I basically, uh, what the question is saying is that we have a material, material A, and it's rubbed against three materials from the chart, which is the triboelectric series. And uh, since it is still positive after being rubbed with all of those materials, we know that it is uh, more positive than all of them. Thus, it will be um, on the more positive end of the triboelectric series, which in this case would be below cotton. So D is the correct answer. Again, I'll give you another minute to look at this problem and think about the answer, and then we'll discuss. Okay, I hope this one wasn't too tricky for you. I think it was pretty straightforward. So the question says, which statement best explains why a rubber rod becomes negatively charged when rubbed with fur? The answer is D. Molecules in the fur have a stronger attraction for electrons than the molecules in the rubber rod. Again, this has to do with electron affinity. So while answers A and B might have been tempting, um, they deal with conductivity and not electron affinity. So I have two uh, quick real world examples of the triboelectric effect. And so the first one is with NASA. And NASA will actually cancel a launch if a vehicle is predicted to pass through certain types of clouds, which could generate P static. P standing for precipitation which could interfere with radio signals used in communication. What's more, insulators in the rockets can capture and accumulate a great deal of charge that can build up and cause serious damage as it leads to the ignition and explosion of flammable vapors. There's a shock created, like after you rub your feet on carpet and touch a door handle, and that could lead to a catastrophe in this case. This shows the wide-scale application of such a simple principle. Also, moral of the story, don't rub your socks all over the insulators of a rocket engine the next time you plan on traveling in space. And finally, lightning. Inside storm clouds, many frozen raindrops bump into each other as they are hurled around in the air, these collisions creating electric charge. The bottom layer of the cloud will be left with a net negative charge as it gains electrons from these collisions and becomes heavier and the top layer of the cloud will be left with a net positive charge and becoming lighter, it will be on the top. The net negative charge on the bottom of the cloud will uh, polarize the surface of the earth, which will be left with a net positive charge. And this will create um, this electric field, which is created from the tribal electrification within the storm cloud will lead to a discharge known as the phenomena of lightning. Here are some of my sources. I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, you found it enlightening. And thank you for your time.